Hello and welcome to Frank's School. I'm calling a six year 51st day first video. Uh, I'm calling this making the impossible garden possible. In the last video I, I showed the, the extreme limitations that I have with this area naturally and that I put on myself. So how can it be possible? Well there's three things that I can think of that have been critical. One is gravity irrigation. Once I can get to the ground, you know, once I've got the sod defeated and, and can actually get to the ground and dig in it, that land is in a place where I can irrigate it by gravity. Uh, and, and if you'd like to see more about that, I th uh, contour gardening. I've got a video, maybe I'll give you the link for that in the description. Contour gardening on another property. I show about how that's developed. It's easier to see there, but that's critical. Uh, another thing is what I call point loading. Uh, by using, at least this first year, by using mostly or starting with plants that really only need an area about that big of fertility, that's where the roots go, and then they spread out across the ground. I, I can be covering 100 square feet, say 10 by 10, or maybe not that much, 8 by 8 maybe, with one <clears throat> watermelon plant or uh, squash or zucchini or maybe cucumbers or pumpkins. And those are, I just figured that's what it's gonna be this first year principally. And another thing, I, I guess I don't have it here, uh, but uh, if you look at, uh, well here it is, sowing in the impossible garden. Since the ground cracks, it's so bad. Uh, uh, I had shown that I think I've got a way to amend the soil. There's a word my mother always used to say, oh, you can amend the soil. And I said, yeah, right, when you get terrible soil. But I think I've found a way that I actually can. And, and my daughter said that you'd call that an amending, an amendment to the soil, what you're doing. Uh, and, and you can see about that. So that, that doesn't have to do with the point loading, but that's a way to begin to get the rest of the garden manageable. And then extreme mulching. This is critical. I call it extreme mulching. And this afternoon or else tomorrow, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to film examples of what I'm doing with this extreme mulching. And it really has been extreme. Uh, I have, there's all kinds of materials that I have used, others that I could have used, and, and, and I gathered up enough really to mulch the entire area. Uh, bale wrap. My neighbor had a big pile of it that he'd taken off bales and it was going to get burnt was what was going to happen. I said, hey, can I have that? And that, that has served me very well. I mean, it's an enormous amount of bale wrap, what they, this white plastic that they wrap bales with. And I laid that out. Of course, it has to be weighted down. Polyester cloth, I had been at an auction and I got three or four rolls of cloth for almost nothing, I don't know, maybe $10, maybe 15 And I didn't know what kind of cloth it was really, and if it had been better cloth, cotton or something, I would have used it. I hadn't in mind using it somehow in the building process. But when I realized how flammable it was, and that it was not cotton, I, I was stymied a little bit, but it, it ended up being perfect as a mulch. Now, now it has to be moved periodically, because the grass will find a way to get up through it if you don't flip it over or move it just a little bit to, to disrupt that. But it has been very useful and you'll see that. Used roofing. I have been slow to take, when I've torn buildings down, I've been slow to recycle the roofing, to take it to the scrapyard. Uh, I, I don't know why. I thought well, maybe I'll use it or something. It, it didn't take much to stack it. Well, it worked fine as uh, very good as mulch. Steel is what I'm talking about here. And plastic, well, again, at a sale for maybe $5, I got a stack about that high of white roofing. And I, I think it's thin. And I think it was used for, for to let light in the buildings, although I'm not sure how much light actually does come through it. And I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it either, but it has been so useful. Uh, uh, they're, they're very thin. I probably have a hundred sheets of it. And, and so you'll see that. Uh, so I'm going to call it roofing. Uh, vinyl. Well, uh, I have vinyl that came from uh, the skirt around a house, <coughs> house trailer. 
And you, you'd see it in contour gardening, if you'd follow through that, uh, that I, in that first example, I didn't know what to do with it, and I had it there, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll put it n near to my plants. <clears throat> I used tires uh, to, to keep it from blowing away. Old rugs. Uh, this is, almost all this stuff is stuff that's going to go to the landfill. People don't want it, but it's, it's fine. Again, with old rugs, you've got to periodically, like once every couple months or something, certainly once a year at least, you have to pick it up, and flip it over, or move it, because it, the ground will begin to work its way into it. Pellet liners. <clears throat> I, I came by a whole bunch of them, too, and the guy said, they're junk. They're worth nothing. Uh, he couldn't, I mean... They, I guess they, they, I guess they'd maybe be destined to be ground up again for wood chips or something. You'll see them; they're sort of pressed together, and they, I got a lot of them. And the way it started with that, uh, this man Adam, that helps me, he's really strong, and he, he, he was taking. I can see him now taking them off the pickup truck and throwing them like a discus thrower in, into this garden that had the grass already this high. Well, well it's much tamer now. Well, anyway, pal lunch. Rubber mats, a rubber mat that I think came out of a car floor. It, I only have one of them I'm using, but it works. Cardboard. I tried that, you know, because I got thinking, well, you know, a lot of people couldn't come up with this stuff. What about cardboard? And uh, my neighbor Andy said, all oh, people people farm with card or garden with cardboard. They just cut a hole in it and plant their plants there. And uh, I thought, well, I'll try some of that because I have a lot of card. My one neighbor gives me this cardboard, and he—they're big consumers, and they get stuff shipped to them all the time. So, but you could get a bale of cardboard at a local store here for. Pro I think they maybe get seventy-five dollars for a bale. It's already been laid and, and crushed and baled, and that would be enough for an enormous garden. Uh, drywall, well, if it doesn't have nails in it. When you pull drywall off, that's an issue. It all no one ever has any use for drywall. Use drywall. Uh, the nails, as I say, are an issue. But if you were careful enough with them, or some, or, or the screws. Well, whew, if it's put on with screws, it must come off just in tiny pieces. So probably wouldn't work. Paneling, uh, same thing. You know uh, what they call paneling. I mean, that's what is it really? It's not really wood. But see, anything that's opaque. Uh, lumber, uh, boards, planks, just a board laying on the ground <laughs> would, would, would mulch that spot. Old trampoline tops. My son has gone through about five tops to trampolines or trampolines and and we know that we recycled the springs as, as uh, and the metal. <clears throat> uh, some I kept but, but to the scrapyard. But what do you do with the top? Well, I say to fold it up, and I'll, I'll think of something. And so I've got some of them. You'll see them. Those are things I've used. Now, thing, things I haven't used yet are tarps. If you had old tarps around, uh, lumber wrap. This, when lumber is shipped to a lumber yard, it, it's got. It, they want to keep it dry, so they have this wrap that goes over. It. <coughs> At least here, that goes into the dumpster. I've asked permission to take it out of the dumpster, and I have some of that around. I was going to use for something else, but it would be available. Paper. My mother-in-law swore by it. <clears throat> she had a roll of paper she got from the paper mill that was just extra or something, and uh, she she used it all the time, weighted it down with rocks, and she swore by it. Uh, I haven't. I'm t to me, paper would be a little bit too thin to, to be effective. Uh, Oh, I say I haven't used drywall and I haven't used, I haven't used paneling, uh, but they, they they would work sort of. Now you got to weight it down. <clears throat> if you just lay cardboard there, or a lot of this stuff, the wind uh, the wind would t take it right away. Uh, so what do you use for weights? Well, tires have been very useful to me, and nobody wants old tires. But tires, not only as a weight. They also, when the plants, when I first start the plants, I can lay a tire down and lay a screen, old screen over it, <coughs> or glass over it, to have a little raised bed that's like a, its own little uh, uh, greenhouse or, or, or what do they call it, cold frame or something. So tires, pallets, <coughs> old pallets, uh, 
just just as weights, just just on there to keep the stuff from blowing away. Slabs, well, that's a, like like lumber. Slab is you know the first cut that you make, and I suppose most people wouldn't have slabs around, but I have some, and I've found them very useful as well. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, I think I've covered everything now, and as I say, I'm going to go outside and film some of this stuff in action. Because I'm, once I realized how effective it was, and I was beginning, it, its use was kind of ending in, in the impossible garden, at least for now. What I thought, what am I going to do with it? Well, I'll go to another impossible garden, and I'll continue to use what I have. So, uh, we'll see you later. Bye for now.